I wasn't even bathing, and children were always after me on the street, laughing and making mockery of me. At times, I pitch camp in the bush for a long time until my children find me there and bring me home. Auntie I was brought home one day while her mental condition had reached its peak. She tells me she cannot remember exactly what made her hit her pregnant daughter to death. This is how her journey into this prison started. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I am told my daughter who was almost due was there and I hit her with something and she died. I am extremely sad even talking about this. I later realized I had been arrested and sent to the police station and later to this place. The officer in charge of the Tamale female prison, Superintendent Alice Chumwa, confirms Antia was not mentally sound when she was arrested and brought to the prison. This officer personally sought psychiatric treatment for Antia. What the Air Force is saying is true. The day she was admitted into this, this prison, in fact, we had a lot to do. Because when you tell her to sit down, you won't sit down. She'll be roaming about. She can even bath ten times a day. And about the bathing, we have to arrest her and then bath her. Officers were bathing her. And you see, our walls are... There are some uh, bottles around there. Listen, when the, uh, the lizard, when they pass on it, at least some fall, mm -hmm. then you would try and then hide herself. You go and pick it and hide it somewhere. Uh -huh. he, want, he wanted to commit suicide. Oh. So we are always monitoring her. The officers on duty night, uh, the prisoners that he was sleeping with them. We didn't give a chance. So when I decided the, how it was going on, I didn't wait for the, the police who brought her. I took her myself to a uh, half mental hospital here. So I have to send her. This mental hospital was in Tamale, but it got to a point they needed to refer her to the Accra Psychiatric Hospital. An approval was given and Antia was sent there. She spent over four months at the Accra Psychiatric Hospital. Before she came, with God, all things are possible. Mm. She was okay. Mm. So when she came, he came and thanked the officers. Wow. That those, she insulted them, whatever harm he did to her fellow prisoners and officers, you should forgive her. Because wow. that time, she didn't do what he was doing. So we all said, oh, we are forgiving you. We, we wanted you to be one of us. That's why we were always monitoring you. But when he came, we haven't got any problem with her. She respects everybody. He doesn't, he, he doesn't quarrel with them. She's very good. But her problem is, at times you see her, you'll be crying. Why? Because of the children that she has left them at home. Yes, Yafosti always cries. She has still not come to terms with the fact that she killed her own daughter, who was almost close to giving her a grandchild. Again, she simply can't stop crying because her husband, who was looking after the six children when she was arrested, has also died. I really miss my children. I always feel sad any time I think about them, and this makes me cry.
I wish I am free to go home today to take care of my children. I have really missed them. My last born is too young to be orphaned. I am not dead, yet my children are orphans. I really want to go home. It was never my intention to bring children into this world for them to go through all this. Children always miss their mothers. As the year is coming to an end, they will be very sad because I am unavailable to do anything for them. I always pray to God to help me get out of this place to go and take care of my children. Now, the entire burden of the family is on her 31-year-old eldest son. Ya Fosti has no lawyer. She tells me her prosecutor has never shown up in court and her case is always adjourned, though she is taken to court every two weeks. Remember, she has been in prison custody for close to four years. Her case may be a sad one. Probably, if you were a judge, the next time she comes to court, you will free her. But retired Supreme Court Judge Justice Stephen Alan Brube says Ya Fosti would have to prove in court that she was indeed mentally ill when she committed the offense. The allegation that she was mentally unsound at the time of the commission of the offense has to be investigated. Now you investigate that inside the court by leading evidence. The difficulty is how does a mad person lead evidence that, to show that at the time of the incident she was mad? But that is one of the anomalies of the law. You are, you are alleging that you were mad at the time of the incident. The court, the law requires that the onus is on you to establish that you were mad. The police don't have to prove that you were mad when you committed your offense. But if they have to, if they knew you were mad, they wouldn't have brought you to court. You who are alleging that you were mad must prove that you were mad at the time you committed the offense. How can such a person prove? I don't know, but that's, that is the law. And uh, we've gone into this matter at length, and the law is that, the only, you see, at the time of the trial, you will be seen, and then you indicate how you were mad. Prisons were never designed as facilities for the mentally ill, yet that is one of their primary roles today. In some countries, a number of the men and women who cannot get mental health treatment in the community are swept into the criminal justice system after they commit a crime. Solitary confinement is recognized as difficult to withstand. Indeed, psychological stresses such as isolation can be as clinically distressing as physical torture. Right here at the Tamale Central Prisons, some of the inmates point to their colleagues who have such mental disorders. Concerning these, our brothers, it's not easy mm -hmm. to stay black down. Because if they enter, if they don't know the rules. If they don't know what is the meaning, if, what is the meaning of rules. If you day plus them fighting, they even if they always even beat people or knock people, mm. and even cells, they may even go toilet in his all of his body, and even take it to the cells, even to bath, unless we grab him. Sometime before we finish, he may knock somebody, want to wound somebody. So uh, we they face a lot of problems about concerning them. And we don't know how to do And they are human, we can't throw them out and go inside the Leading, And I'm saying that if God know that it is true that they, are, they want to try them, then like they should take them to the psychiatric. Or if they want to free them, too, they should free them, but they should not let them mix plus. People here. Prisoners have rates of mental illness, including such serious disorders as schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and major depression that are two to four times higher than members of the general public. Studies and clinical experience consistently indicate that 8 to 19 percent of prisoners have psychiatric disorders that result in significant functional disabilities 
and another 15 to 20 percent will require some form of psychiatric intervention during the incarceration. Director General of the Ghana Prison Service confirms conditions in the prisons could trigger all forms of mental conditions. You know the prison is a very harsh and deprived place and when you are in prison you can face a lot of emotional and mental agony. You understand that alone can make you mad. But the onus is on the officer in charge. When you find out that somebody is misbehaving or behaving abnormally, you have to put him before the doctor for the doctor to attest to the fact that he is mentally uh, ill. And if he's uh, mentally ill, we don't keep mental patients in our care. We send them to the mental hospital. Mm. One thing that is lacking in the prison service at this time is, uh, how do you call them? Psychiatrists. Mm. We need psychiatrists to help us take care of people with psychological problems. That is how I will put it. I won't say they are mad, but they may be going through traumas and may be going through some mental uh, torture. Simply leaving your family behind and being in a different environment where there's so much hardship can blow your mind. You understand? Coincidentally, a number of these inmates with such mental conditions are on remand. Some researches show that remand prisoners are at an increased risk of suicide and self-harm. Some inmates say not knowing the whereabouts of your prosecutor and for how long you will be in custody awaiting trial is torturous enough. Yet there are scores and scores of people who have been waiting for years to be told when they will be sentenced or not. At the Sunyani Central Prisons, there are a number of such prisoners. This facility holds 909 inmates. 245 of them have been here as remand prisoners, some for more than seven years. Technically, a prisoner on remand is supposed to be housed in a different part of the prison other than where regular prisoners are kept. However, these individuals are often mixed with the general population due to lack of space. That is the case here at the Sunyani Central Prisons. Uh -huh. I see today, you have seen that we've got some visitors with us, all of you. Yeah. You've seen them. Yeah. And why is that we have called only remands here? Because, you know, every day I've been telling people that uh, we are not happy if we are here. The government is not sleeping. Every day is thinking of you. So they are sent these people here to come and see with their own eyes and hear from you what we are doing to help people to go out. And also to see some of your problems. What you feel that at least you are really undergoing through this your remands. Some of you have been here two years, three years, four years, five years, and you know the efforts we have been putting to take it to court and what the results you get. You see, so please, you all keep quiet and he will tell you, in fact, it's a very good message. In fact, from here, he's trying to see what you do to, to reduce the number of remands. So at least if it's going to court, you go regularly, anything will be done. You done quickly. Well, the original commander, deputy director of prisons, Al Hassan Na Nahi, has done part of my job for me. No need for me to explain to them my mission there. They have been charged with robbery, manslaughter, and murder. Some say they have not been sent to court since they were placed in custody. Let's spend some time with 42 year old father of four, Kwesi Deri. He has been a remand prisoner for eight years, five months. He was charged with murder. I was a farmer in Seshi. One of my brothers died and we held a funeral in the northern region. So when I was returning to Seshi, when I got to Sunyani, I had exhausted all the money on me. So I stayed there and worked as a laborer for some time to enable me to save some money and continue my journey. Someone offered me a job, but later got me arrested that there was a robbery incident in which someone was killed. His argument was that because I had worked there, I knew about the robbery and the murder. I told him that I didn't know anything about the allegation and that even if I knew about it, did they think I would still be around working? Kwesi Derry was arrested together with some five more suspects, but they have been released. All of them were granted bail in the sum of 70 cities in 2006. But with no money to pay his, he was remanded. Kwesi has no lawyer and he says he cannot afford the services of a lawyer. 
According to him, since the judge who handled the case was transferred one year five months ago, he has never been sent to court nor set eyes on his prosecutor. Kwesi has heard that his children have dropped out of school and some have become laborers. He prays daily to God to order their steps so they don't also end up in prison. Under the Constitution of Ghana, everyone has the right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty. But criminal law lecturer and a human rights lawyer, Isidore Tufo, believes in reality this appears to be the opposite. Suspects are rather pronounced guilty until proven innocent. So they are kept in remand for years. If you want to have a criminal justice system that is more efficient, it will be more work for the prosecution. But of course, if they want to have your right of, um, to personal liberty restricted, then they must bring a motion and justify why. Mm. Otherwise, in all cases where the offense is bailable and the accused person has sureties, I think there must be a presumption of bail automatically. Yes. And judges should not entertain this issue of um, investigations are ongoing, investigations are ongoing. They must dismiss. Yes. If investigations are ongoing, then of course, get ready and come. Unless what you have can build a strong prima facie case. You see? Because if, and even when what I have built a strong prima facie case, I think if trial cannot be had within reasonable time, the accused person must be granted bail. And unfortunately, again, under our laws, under the Constitution, it is only after a period of time which is unreasonable that the, the court, in all cases, will grant bail. In that case, you see that our laws are not proactive. How will you allow the person to suffer all the years before coming to the conclusion that now that you have suffered um, an unreasonable time on remand, I'm granting you bail? When at the initial stages, there were all indications to the point that this trial cannot be had with the time. So right from the inception, sometimes, you know, this is not a trial that can be had with the time. So I think right there and then the accused person must be granted bail. He walked to court sometimes, a case of murder. First year, investigations going on. Second year, investigations going on. Then you appear before a court, a judge. You make an application for bail. Then they tell you, two years is not unreasonable. So when is, when is reasonable? So should it be five years after then you come to the conclusion it's unreasonable that what will have happened to the accused person for the five years? This is a criminal justice system. We are seeking to do justice, but not punish people. To me, I mean, without any, any, any reasonable justification for it. If a judge is sitting and the accused person is brought, and from the evidence, they are now going to look for evidence and all that. You grant them one adjournment, two adjournments, and they still come back with the same excuses. I think you grant the accused person bail. But is it that easy and simple for judges to grant suspect bail based on this? This is the question I pose to Justice Stephen Broby. No, you are provisioned to discharge the accused person for want of prosecution. This is where the prosecution has woefully failed to prosecute or have unreasonably failed to prosecute. But you don't acquit such a person. You discharge a person, give him his freedom, and when they are ready, they bring him back. Right? We have, the, the law allows that to happen. But as I said, you don't do it on flimsy grounds. There must be good reason for re resorting to that kind of move so that the wrong people don't get out of prison. And at the same time, so that the right people are not kept in custody. Right? It's, it's a discretion of the judge exercise on the facts of the case. So in Kumase, Sunyane and Tamale Central prisons, the remand situation is not any better. 
the same appalling conditions and similar complaints from inmates. A number of them cannot simply understand why no strong, definite case has been found against them, yet they have been held for years. Well, let's check on the Insawam medium security prisons. The situation may be better there. We are here today at the Insawam medium security prisons where over 3,000 inmates are in this facility. Out of the number, 620 of them are on remand. Some, we are told, have been here for seven years, four years, five years. We are here to listen to them as to why their lawyers are not attending to them and also why their CIDs um, holding their cases have not been coming for them to take them to court. So join me as we tour this facility. Any visitor who comes here goes through a thorough security checks before the gate I described as Heaven's Gate is opened. It's a huge metal gate twice my height. It's thus difficult to see what's happening inside from the entrance. Those who don't know may mistake this place to be a prayer camp. The least chance these inmates get, they gather and do prayer warfare and ask God to intervene and get them out of this place. Some are also seen in groups teaching and studying the Bible. The people trying to tell us. What the people is saying is that there is one thing that we must also know that the enemy can fast. How some are seriously calling on their gods and others busily reading the Bible reminds me of how in the Acts of the Apostle, Paul and Silas, in spite of their incarceration, continuously prayed, praised and studied the Bible. And there was a sudden breakthrough for them. Some of the inmates, and especially those on remand, a sudden miracle they expect from such prayers and spending time with God will be their prosecutors coming to take them to court for the first time in four years. Though inmates here also often complain of facing congestion and other difficulties, this facility appears to be way better off than the Kumase, Sunyane and Tamale Central prisons. Though it is relatively better and spacious, it was not built to house 3,714 inmates, as the commander in charge, deputy director of prisons, Sylvester Rabos, explains. The facility was initially made for 717 authorized capacity. But as a nation, we have not developed our infrastructure to cope with increasing population. When uh, our first president, Kwame Nkrumah, envisioned uh, the construction of this prison, the population of Ghana was under 5 million. Today we are over 25. And the prison infrastructure nationwide has not increased at, with that space. Yeah. So that accounts for the increase in our numbers. So then Sawan Medium Security Prison has over 3,000 inmates and 620 of these are on remand. Remand prisoners are exempt from prison requirements like work service as a general rule and they may also be allowed more visitors as well as being permitted to wear their personal clothes. But this means nothing to them. Some have languished for an extended period of time in jail and they have not been even trialed. My name is Samama Kauti. I'm 27 years now. I've been here seven years from 2007 to 2014. Seven years? Yes, sir. As a remind inmate? Yes, sir. What brought you here? Suspect murder. My name is Suleiman. 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 What do you say? I'm 27 years. My name is Suleiman Pentakwadi. I'm a Robin Kiss. My name is Alassa Mohamed. Alassa Mohamed. Yes. How old are you? I'm 28 years. Okay. Where do you come from? I come from... I come from Accra. Accra? Yeah. Okay. For how long have you been here? Four years. No police station, no court. Why? I don't know. Since my CID drink... It come it bring us for here. We no come back. We must also re examine the practice by the courts to remand the of first offenders for suspected crimes, irrespective of the gravity of the offense. This practice increases the number of inmates in our prisons unnecessarily. This is a statement every prisoner, especially those on remand, yearn to hear. 
27-year-old Sule Mohammed is among the thousands of both convicted and remand prisoners who support the interior minister's statement. Sule says he was arrested at Kaswa in the central region after he fought with someone. But he claims he was sent to court and charged with robbery. Because he could not hire a lawyer to argue his case for him, Sule has had to remain in prison. Sule wishes he could be freed now, so he reunites with his family, especially his five-year-old son, who has never seen his father since birth. <laughs> I have two kids, but because I'm here, they have been sacked from school. Because of only 30 CDs to pay their fees, they are home. My eyes are filled with tears. This is no amount I couldn't have paid if I were out. Anytime my wife comes here, she always complains about the hardship they are facing. Because of this, she has been impregnated by another man. Sule is not only angry with his prosecutor, but the judge who remanded him as well. He simply doesn't understand why he must be in prison for years. But Justice Stephen Brobe says judges cannot be blamed under such circumstances. A review of our laws is what is needed to get such persons out of prison. But if somebody's committed assault, petty stealing, he doesn't send him to prison or remand for that kind of offense, particularly misdemeanors which may result in a person being penalized on being given minor offense, uh, sentences, right? But, so those offenses must be examined. So, so my lord, why do some judges do that? Why don't they consider that and, and they go on remanding such people? You don't blame the judges. It depends on the antecedents of the accused person. Who is a man who just come from prison. And he was last year in prison, the year before in prison. He's good. And the court is not supposed to know. The police know him very well. And they said, this man has just been released from prison. He just come back and here he is. Well, the court may be reluctant to grant you bail, knowing very well what you are going to do. And then also, you see, the, the courts don't delight in sending people to prison just for the sake of that. But as I said, it depends upon the circumstances. Sometimes you grant them bail. They cannot find sureties. You don't blame the court for that. You don't blame the police. It's the accused person. Before Sule was arrested, he called himself a fighter. But he says now, even if someone slaps him, he would turn the other cheek. I'm a media master, because me me here born in a me ba in Takwana me 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 koko ye. But yadi amami robin peace. Inti amasi si ano masuya se si se si si ano. As for me, I have really changed. I committed no offense. I only fought with somebody, but they said I rather robbed. Now, I have learned that if anyone offends me, I will report to the police. I will not even attempt hitting you back should you hit me. His counterpart, 28-year-old Alhassan Mohammed, has also spent four years in this prison as a remand prisoner. For the four years he has been here, Alhassan says he has never been taken to court. But before Alhassan Mohammed continues with his story, ACP Frank Kofi wants to draw our attention to how some inmates could fabricate such stories to suit their own agenda. We have had instances where we were conducting uh, justice for all program, as it were, as an attempt to reduce the number of uh, Roman prisoners in our cells. And some of the inmates who were going to court on a regular basis, in fact, some of them were slated to go to court the following week, were telling the people who were interviewing them that they have never been to court for five, ten years. You know, just because they want to hide under the ambit of the Justice for All program and get released or bailed. So sometimes, I'm not saying always, some of the inmates don't tell those who go there the real facts of their own stories. Now back to Alhasa Mohammed. 
He alleges an informant led the police to arrest him because the said informant claimed he, Mohammed, knew the location of some criminals the police investigators were pursuing. To the day where he will catch me, he come my house, he can't play with my children before he catch me. Yeah, he know me, I'm not a bad boy, I'm a footballer. Yes, everybody know me, I know still before. Yeah. I'm a footballer. And you said since you came here like three years ago, you've four five, years, four years, you've never been to years. the court. I've not go court before, but I'm one of my case partner, he go house, justice for, for justice for can't leave him. So right now he's day house, but we will day here. Yesterday self I cried because I don't have father. I'm seven years, my father died, only my mother. My senior brother be crippled, you know, the work. <laughs> So as I did, yeah, the pre give them. The pre give them. Make a go house, make a go see them. Because it's a pain. I'm not doing anything. You don't have anybody. Unless God. You don't have a lawyer? Never. You don't have money. My families, they don't have money. Do they know you are here? Some of some of them, they know I'm here, and not every my family knows I'm here. Have Some they, of them. Have they been visiting you? Once, once. Why do you want to cry? What do you think can be done about your case? What can? can government do for you? Speak to the president. He'll unless be watching God. you. I don't have anything to say unless God. Don't even curse your enemy to be imprisoned. That's Al Hassan's advice. Though he speaks about his situation with pain, he remains grateful to God for how life within the four walls of the prison has changed him. I'm giving my fellow men for outside. Make them take care. Prison is not good. Prison at times, they said prison is not good, but at times, prison is good. It's on or off. Mm -hmm. If you can't prison, you won't straight your life. You go feel straight your life and change and follow God. We have mocks for here. We have church. We have park. I'm a footballer before they catch me. So every day I thank God I come here. I punish my work. Your football skills? Yes. Me, Ahmed Barusu, the reporter, Ibrahim Atiku, that place all oh, my meat. But I don't get height. Mm. And because of the friends. So right now, if I come out, that friends, friends, I stop. Stop. If I get him, I will follow the team. Though inmates here in the Nsawan prisons complain about their situation, I may say they are fortunate and better than the rest in the other prisons. At least authorities here have introduced a system which reminds them of when sacks are due for court. Chief Superintendent Geshon Tete is the officer in charge of the Nsawen Prisons Paralegal Unit. Prior to the, the court date, you know, we are having a gogota for that purpose. Prior to the date, we, we call them to remind them that the inmates are here. Uh, so they, they, they respond. The, the response was not bad and, and along that line. When we call them, they come and pick them. Yes, so it means that every po police officer who brings an inmate here mm -hmm. leaves his details behind. Yes, we, 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 we collect their, their, their phone numbers, uh, their, their stations, so that in, in case of any eventuality, we, we call them. So we are having their, their pa pa particulars here. Uh, all, the, all the police who bring their people here, we are having their records. So that to, to follow on them it does not become a problem. In the other prisons, remand prisoners don't have this opportunity. Their worst enemies are not the judges or magistrates who remanded them, rather, the prosecutors and officials from the criminal investigations department. They level all forms of accusations against them. I have something to say concerning the prosecutor. The first one who was who was the one that pursued the first prosecutor. And the second one who came, the second one came and the prosecuting, he changed even the prosecuting. Mm. You see, the second one, he came, he changed the prosecuting. Mm. 
So have you ever had the chance to speak to the prosecutor yourself? Never. Never. I never have any chance. Because that one, if I want to, I don't know, but maybe if I try, they will say contempt or something. Sometimes this court, I, I don't know whether they, they cheat us, but that one I don't know. But if you try to say something, they will say contempt of court or something like that. So it may sometimes, even if you have something to say, but we fear. Yeah. Because you may say and have another problem. Yeah. so many years, remind court Young friend, I said, Would you know you did it? Your mom, you say, Unis Cave for lawyer, okay, I was a lawyer. Now, you say, and if you and the old Hannah said, When you are serving the lawyer, you knew us. The Miss Lemon by you want to say, Sadie will not move your own boy. Titty, the entire man prison, young man, I say, Unis Cave, you knew us. I'm not. Police in this hour before I crowd, who knew us will be our only be behind your day or born Kakwa. Oh, ma. The Director General in charge of legal and prosecution of the police service, ACP Frank Kofi, says they also share in the pain and frustrations of these remand inmates languishing in jail. And what I will say for now is that I, I really sympathize or empathize with their situation. I don't think it is proper for any law enforcement agency to deliberately put somebody in, in prison and allow him to languish in prison without... Uh, sending him to court for his case to be determined by the competent court of judiciary. So I empathize with them and I, I, I will apologize on behalf of the Ghana Police Service if anybody, any police officer has done anything intentionally to put somebody languishing in prison. But like I've said, it is not the duty or the fault of police officers alone. It is a systematic problem and all those who are involved in the criminal justice administration must ensure that we don't keep people on remand unnecessarily. He adds that the police administration may not accept the entire charge. ACP Frank Kofi says the judiciary must share in the blame. The judges also have a mandate. They, they, they have to try and complete cases that they start in a specific period of time. You know, so for example, if they take 10 cases, for example, they want to ensure that they have completed those 10 cases and given judgment on those cases. If you are going to open fresh cases every day,